Good morning. I'm glad you joined me on this Wednesday. I hope you're having a good week. If not, I hope that this devotion and our prayers will lift your spirits and help you have a better week. I hope that you don't look like this kitten. This is my it's only Wednesday face is what it says for those that are listening without video. Uh, that's not a good face. So I hope you're doing better than the, than the cat is anyway. But I do want to welcome you this morning. I want to talk today about uh, invisible wisdom. You know, sometimes we only believe or understand what we see, and that's not enough because we're not just physical, we're spiritual. So the real things that are important, we're not going to be able to see. But I want us to look and talk about wisdom today and start with Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we need to understand how important that and knowledge of the Holy one is understanding so we need to have knowledge of god and know that that is wisdom that is where the power the source comes from you know there's a there's a, a time in the morning when you wake up i don't know about you but uh, it seems like when i first wake up uh, your eyes are fuzzy and you just can't see good maybe if you wear glasses you need to put on your glasses or contacts um, so that you can get focused and, and realize what's around you. Um, usually what I do is I need to look at the clock to see if it's in the middle of the night or if it's time to get up. Uh, throughout the day, you and I rely on our sight. But unfortunately, our physical sight can't see the spiritual. There's an interesting story, and I don't have enough time today, but I would encourage you to go back and read it. It's in the uh, book of Numbers. Uh, go back to chapter 21, 22, 23, but it's focused in chapter 22 and it it's, tells the story of a, a sorcerer or a witchcraft. Um, his name is Balaam and it's the king of the Moabites. Uh, his name is Balak and he has called Balaam, who's a sorcerer, to come because the Israelites are about to go into the promised land of Canaan. And this king wants the sorcerer to come and to cast a spell or to curse the Israelites. And so he tells them he'll give them a lot of money. But the point of the story is, is this sorcerer Balaam is not paying attention to his surroundings. If you read the story, we see that he gets on his donkey and he takes off when he's promised a lot of money. And he's going along and the donkey all of a sudden stops and the donkey will not move because the donkey can see the angel of God in the road. And the story goes on and tells how Balaam starts beating the donkey to go and the donkey actually talks to Balaam. So it's a very interesting uh, lesson if you'll go back and look at it. I pulled a little picture up to give you a vision because the scripture tells us that it was a, a giant angel warrior and so it scared the donkey and he wouldn't go forward and so after the angel after the donkey is talking to the sorcerer Balaam they talk back and forth and God opens the sorcerer's eyes and he can actually see the angel as well and then we read on that he God allows him to pass on and he goes and he goes before the king of the Moabites and he wants him to give a curse and God actually touches his heart and he actually blesses the Israelites three times. So it's interesting. But the point is that Balaam's eyes were open so that he could see the difference between life and death. He needed to see the spiritual part. You know, foolishness in our lives, it always starts small. But so often, the foolishness of our lives is the relying on our understanding, which is based on what our eyes can see and what we have experienced in the past. And unfortunately, that's not enough. And that's a sad way for us to see the world and treat others around us. I'm so glad that God's eyes are not tainted by what he sees today of us because or what he's seen in the past, our sinful nature. You see, with God, there's no bias of people. He's omnipresent. 
which means he's everywhere at all the at all times. At the same time, God is everywhere. He can see everything. You see, our understanding is not enough that we can understand all this, but God can do this. So when we draw close to God, we draw close to his wisdom. And this is the good news. We can rely on him and rest in his quiet trust. Even when we're unsure what to say or do or how a situation is going to unfold. You know, I want to encourage you today, uh, just like Balaam when he was on the road to go to the king of the Moabites, he couldn't see God's angel in the path with the sword. You know, God has angels all around us and we can't see them protecting us. So we should not be so fearful and scared to move forward because God has a plan for us. So when we decide to do something, we need to lay our petitions or our prayers to God. We need to talk to him, tell him we want to do his will and he'll bless us and he'll provide for us. You know, spread out your petition before God and then say, Thy will, not mine, be done, Father. I want to leave you with a quote from D.L. Moody, one of the great preachers in the 20th century. He said, The sweetest lesson I have learned in God's school is to let the Lord choose for me. I want to ask you a question today. Are you letting God choose your path? Are you letting him decide what road or what course you take in life? If you're not, you're going to end up in the wrong way. So you need to let God decide where you need to go and what you need to do because he will lead you in the correct way and down the right path. If you're here today and you haven't joined a church or not part of a church family, I would love to have you join us and I would invite you with open arms. We'll receive you and love you and bring you in as a part of God's family and God's church family at Proctor Memorial. We also have YouTube and Facebook live streaming at 1030 on Sunday mornings, same time as our live service. Come join us. You'll receive a blessing. If you can't be there every Sunday, you can stay connected uh, through the live streaming. Love for you to join me right now as we go to the Lord in prayer. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can stop and pause and, and draw closer to you. We can study your word. We can learn from the lessons in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And we can seek your wisdom through your writings, God, and your teachings, and also through your Holy Spirit that is inside of us. I pray, Father, if there's one that's listening to me today that's not saved, that they'll reach out to me and that they will make that profession of faith and they will seek to be filled with your Holy Spirit. We don't want anyone lost, Father, and we thank you so much. We pray for those that are sick, that are unable to, to do what you would have them to do to be all that you would have them to be. May your blessings be upon them and your healing hand touch them. Help us, God, to be a, a tools of encouragement and a blessing in their lives and everyone else that we encounter. Go with us, God, and direct us. For us in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a good rest of your week, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless you.